Thank you, Ms. Tutu. Um, thank you, of course, Mrs. Rajapi, for calling us all together here. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. I think today, uh, more than at any time in the years that I've been involved in the cause of the MEK, we all know what fate the Mullahs wish to impose on the MEK members remaining in Iraq. The only way, the only way that their situation can be improved is to make it clear to the State Department, to the P5 plus one, to the United States government as a whole, that whatever happens with respect to Iran's nuclear activities, we will not permit the residents of Camp Liberty to be forgotten or regarded as an insignificant detail. In particular, we will not allow the United States government to forget the solemn promise that was made in 2003 by a United States general in writing when the residents of Ashraf were disarmed that they would have protected person status under the Fourth Geneva Convention and would be protected. Now, Mayor Giuliani told some of the history of MEK's own contribution to detecting Iran's nuclear program. And so I hope and believe that MEK will continue to be of assistance in that respect as well, because it will, in so doing it will help not only the world, but itself. When Iran cheats, and they will cheat, make no mistake about it, they're probably cheating even as we talk, but when they cheat, and it is detected, and any case for which sources in Iran learns of it, and makes it known to the United States and the world, then there will be a way out of the delusion that we seem to be living in now. So whatever grand strategy the delusional diplomats think they're carrying out, we are not going to permit the fate of the MEK residents to be treated as a secondary. Nuri al-Maliki has said in recent months that there are arrest warrants against several residents. The United States cannot stand by and permit him to act on that claim and still retain any moral standing in the world. You know, the government of the United States has three branches. Judicial, legislative, executive. We've already prevailed in the judicial branch. When the MEK was removed from the State Department list of foreign terrorist organizations, only after a court, the, ju the judicial branch, threatened to act on its own if the State Department did not act. Thus far, the executive branch has declined to act. Our principal hope now appears to rest with the third branch, with Congress, which has the power to act and at least to hold hearings and to cut off funding to the Maliki government. It has the power to do those two things so that it can cut off the means whereby Iran works its will and shine the bright light of publicity on the State Department's duplicitous conduct because of the part that we were made to play in what happened to the residents of Camp Ashraf who became residents of Camp Liberty. We are going to do whatever is in our power to make sure that it will not escape responsibility for the people it pledged to protect. Now, we all need sources of inspiration at a time like this. One of them, of course, is Nelson Mandela, a man who, by personal example, acted for himself and for his nation, but also was able to rally through his moral authority thousands and millions of others. We have that example. And we have the example of the history of the United States, if we'll look to it. Today is the 72nd anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. The United States was jarred into consciousness about what it had to do when it underwent that attack. And at that point, it wasn't worried about moral courage. It got up and did what it had to do. Well, it is time for us to get up and do what we have to do again. Thank you very much. <laughs>